Hey Nintendo fans and collectors, this is Lithium017 from my channel Nintendo Collecting 101 bringing you a video of a comparison between the two different LogiNet N64 controllers. I do have a very extensive video out about the one already, talking about what games were released for it, but basically these were in hotel rooms and they allowed you to play the N64 for a price of like $7 an hour on a TV in a hotel room. So there's two different controllers here, there is a difference. There's not much of a difference, but I'm here with Ivory, who's my fiance, and we're just going to talk about the two controllers really briefly. But look at the one on the left and the one on the right, and there's nothing different about them except for the joy stick. So a lot of people are like, oh, which version do you have? Well, now I have both versions. You can find these for maybe 20 bucks a piece. That's probably a good amount. They're official by Nintendo, but they're also made by LodgeNet, and they're obviously for just hotel rooms. But I kind of got them because they're a cool addition to a collection, but they're not really a part of the canon if you're collecting N64 controllers. Ivory, how good is that joystick over there? Oh my gosh, it's so tight. Flick it. Is it good? You know when you always flick them? No, that's not the right flick. Flick it, like pull it, yeah, there you go. All the way and then release it and it's awesome. It's really tight joystick, right? But th these are the joysticks that wear out over time. Eventually, on the inside, you get that little white residue that is just left. So if you're using the controller lots, it kind of just builds up and then doesn't really work very well anymore. So this one is different. Look at this joystick. It's almost like a GameCube joystick. It's it's not. It's still an N64 joystick, but it has the plastic in the underneath there. This one, I'm told, will maintain its shape for a lot longer, and it actually won't wear down. So there are other collectors and other N64 enthusiasts that have tried to put this type of joystick into a normal N64 controller so they can always use it. It can be done. It's very difficult. I will try and find the link and I'll post the link in the underbar about how to do it. But I mean that's $20 to get this and then you have to spend a lot of time and open it up and then get your own controller and possibly damage that and try and swap them out. And I think there's some soldering involved too, so it's an extensive process, but if you're really desperate to have an N64 controller that will last a lifetime and will keep working, this is probably the best bet to get this kind of a joystick. Because you can put a GameCube joystick in an N64 controller, but it's really responsive. It makes your character fly around really quickly when you're trying to aim in maybe a Zelda contest where you're shooting arrows. So I do like this joystick a lot more. It's the exact same as the N64 one, just that little extra in the bottom. So that's the only difference between the two LogiNet controllers for the N64. It's a brief video, and they're both black. I don't think they're released in any other color. You cannot put a rumble pack into the bottom of them or anything like that. And you can't even plug these controllers in your console because they only work with like the telephone cable. So this is not a controller that if you buy, you can actually play on the N64. That's why you might want to swap out the joystick if you get this version. So if you want to get them, you might as well try and get both. If you're a collector, why not? Then you just can say, I have both variations. Thank you for watching. I post videos on Mondays and Fridays, and we're going to say goodbye. Bye. Bye.